What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to further update our new trip process. Uh, let me show you what we'll have done by the end of this video. Uh, here we go, on the new trip, you will now, this will be changed to a search here, which is actually not functioning yet, but you'll have some suggested searches if you click on any of these, you'll see it animates nicely to this uh, to the trip over on the next page for the select date. Uh, and if you go back, it animates back down. All right, let's get started with that. All right, so let's get started updating our location view. Uh, the first thing we want to do is move that search bar up to the top. So go ahead and find the column here. We can just go ahead and get rid of this centering vertically. And if we save it, that should just pop everything up to the top. Now, we don't really actually want this continue button anymore because what's going to happen is uh, we're going to search for stuff and the results are going to pop down here. And then we'll click on one of those and it'll bring us to the next page. So for the button, let's just go ahead and remove that. We can keep it down here just so we could see what we were doing there uh, if we need to come back to it later. But yeah, the button can be gone. Uh, also, where it says enter a location, we don't really need that text anymore. So go ahead and just get rid of that. Uh, let's add some slight style to this search box. Uh, and really all we want to add is just a, a little decoration here. So go ahead and after autofocus. And really actually we don't want to autofocus this anymore, which the default is false, so you can just remove that. And that's because we're going to have some suggestions here. So when you come in, we don't want the keyboard to just automatically pop up. It'll just be the search bar will be there if you want it to be there. Uh, go ahead and add a decoration here. And we're going to do an input decoration of a prefix icon. And then use the, you know, the icon icons dot search. And this will give us a nice uh, search box up at the top now. All right, that looks good. Now, the next thing is we're gonna wanna display a list of these suggestions. All right, so after the padding here, let's go ahead and add a divider. And that's going to look just basically like a line, right? So it'll just give us a line. Uh, let's go ahead and add some padding around that though. Uh, we really only need it on the, uh, the left and the right. So let's just do left uh, and we'll give it 10. So it comes in a little bit and right 10 as well. All right, so now this is kind of hard to see on here, but now the padding is, there's a bit of padding. There's a bit of padding on that divider line there. All right, let's say we want to add the word suggestions in the middle of this divider. Uh, to do that, we can just add a, go ahead and add a row around the divider and once we have the row, we can just go ahead and add the divider. Then we'll put a text, a text widget, and that's just going to say suggestions. And then after that, we could put another divider. Uh, so if you look at that, uh, it doesn't quite look like what we want. The reason for that is we need to actually add these dividers here into an expanded widget. So go ahead and add a widget around this and it will be the expanded widget. And then this expanded widgets child will be the divider. Uh, so if you see on the first one that worked, now go ahead and copy this down to the one below and that looks all right. But if you look closely, the suggestion line goes right like the line from the divider goes right into the suggestion. So if we want to change that slightly, we just need to add some padding. Uh, so go ahead and wrap this divider in some padding. And to do that, you can just uh, add padding here. And we really only want on this side, we only want to add it on the right. Uh, and then on this one, we want to add the padding only on the left. All right, and now the suggestion word is printed there quite nicely. Um, this right here, this whole row is actually quite useful and we'll probably use it again. So let's go ahead and create this as a widget right now so that we can reuse it later on down the line. And basically what that would be is we could just, so we can give any any word variable there and we'll have a 
a new divider. To extract this as a widget, just go ahead and highlight the whole widget here, uh, just for the row, and then right click, refactor, and extract it to a flutter widget. And then we're, you can just call this um, whatever you like. I'm gonna call it the divider, the divider with text. Because we already have a divider widget. Uh, so once we refactored that, we have the divider there. And then down here, uh, you can see that new class was created. Um, and this was given a constructor right here that is not taking any parameters, but let's go ahead and require a text field. So it'll be a string divider text. And we're going to require that in our constructor. So, oh, we need a this in front of the so now when we add one of these, we just need to give it a, any string, and then that string uh, will be printed in the middle of our, of our divider, just as you see there. So we just need to pass this divider text, and we could give it suggestion. All right, and if you run it, everything should run exactly the same. All right, great, so we got the divider. The next thing we wanna add is gonna be the list of suggestions. In a past video, basically what we did on this front screen is created these custom cards. We're gonna do very much the same thing here. Uh, we're just gonna create them for a new type of data, which is actually gonna be called, uh, we're gonna call it a place. So when a place is searched, it'll be a card here that comes up. So just like how we did it in the, in the, in the front here, go ahead and create um, pretty much exactly what this is, just these place cards, but they're only gonna have the title and the average budget. So I'm just gonna quickly do that now without, without typing it all out, and then I'll just talk about it. All right, so similar to our custom cards on the homepage, we now have these custom cards built right here. So the first thing we did, I'll just quickly go over, but there's a full video on that, on how to create these. We have a new model now called uh, places, and right now it's just taking two two uh, variables, which is the name and the average budget, as you can see here, name New York, average budget is, you know, that dollar amount. Um, so with that, we just created a few dummy data places right here, and that we call the places list. So now down in our, we have a builder place card now in this uh, widget here, which is actually just being called by a list view builder up in our main scaffold. Make sure this is in, in, wrapped in an expanded widget, and that'll just allow this to be scrollable and take up the rest of the screen. Within, I guess the only other thing really to point out that makes this different than our other custom widgets, well, there's two things. I guess the layout of it, how it's kind of like a two column layout, and the fact that they're clickable. So if you click on this, for instance, Austin, you'll see it brings us to the next page, and Austin is, that Austin location is saved over. So just like how we had before, if you look down here in our commented out section from the old code, we were saving our trip title on our trip object to just be the, uh, the, the basically the text of that search box. And now we're gonna save it to be, <clears throat> uh, right here, we're gonna save it to be the, uh, the index of our card. So whichever card is selected from that places list, we're just gonna use the name of that. So. Austin would be that example. If you click this one, it'll say Boston uh, and so forth. Now, the reason we have an on tapped method here in these cards is because we wrapped the whole um, the whole row of the card. Basically, the card is one large inkwell, and the inkwell allows you to have an on tapped method. So that's why these are clickable whereas our homepage ones are not clickable, which is gonna change actually, uh, eventually. Uh, but yeah, I think this'll, and I'll put all this code up on GitHub. Uh, I guess one other quick thing to know is the way this is laid out. Um, it is one row, right? So this inkwell is just one row right here, you can think of it. So it has a row with just, I mean, basically the whole card is just one row. Um, and then inside that row we have two columns. So there's the column which is just the image and then there's the column that's that's uh, everything else. 
The column with everything else is also wrapped in an expanded widget, and that just makes it take up the rest of the fill up the rest of the container of that row. For the image right now, we're just using a placeholder because we still need to be pulling in image data, uh, which this placeholder widget is nice for mocking up what you want like that. I went ahead and created another widget on the date view, and you can see when you select one of these, like Austin, for example, we now have this. Uh, this new widget up here with a bit more information of what we just selected. Um, now, this is just an example to show you kind of what it will look like. None of the information is really filled in. What I really want to show you is a, a cool transition that we can do from this widget to this widget. I guess briefly, I'll just talk about how this widget was built. It's very similar to how you would have built any of these widgets. Just remove the ink well and kind of simplify it. So in the date view, uh, again, I have a build selected details widget now, and it's just a card with one row, uh, and then two columns, the expanded column, and which is all the text, and then an image column. The image is a little bit bigger than the one in the search, and then essentially this is just, you know, a row of text, or I mean multiple rows of text, which is just each one of these is a row of text. Uh, so that's about all that is. And then when I called it, I call it up at the top here. And I just added some spacers around this existing stuff, uh, which we're going to be updating in a different video. But just so you could see uh, basically this cool transition that we're going to do, which is called a hero transition. And it's actually very simple to add. So we're going to be transitioning from this widget to this widget. So... If you know, if you notice now, nothing really happens. You know, they're just both there. Uh, with the hero transition, go go ahead and add in uh, the location view. We need to do this in both the location view and the date view for that new widget. But since we have these both as as widgets themselves, like as the build place card and the um, and the build selected details. These are the two widgets we're going to be modifying. So go ahead and change this in the build place card. Uh, go ahead and wrap the container in a new widget, and we're and it's called the hero widget. And then we need to give that a tag. So this tag is just a string, and we're going to call it the selected. We're going to call it the selected trip. But this needs to be unique because there's multiple. You know, there's multiple uh, of these cards being built. So just do a dash there, and then we're going to give it the actual... We have the the index here, but we don't, we're not going to have that index on our date view. So we need something that we're going to have on both, which if you notice down here, we pass this name, this, uh, this place's name. So we can use this to keep these unique and identify each one individually, each card individually. Then go ahead and actually add this transition on user gestures and set that equal to true. What that's going to do is allow the iOS transitions, uh, the back swiping, to also use this uh, hero widget in the transition of the back swipe. So we want that set there. That's going to be it on this side. And then we're going to do very much similar thing over on this side which is the build selected details widget. You just go ahead and add or wrap that in a here widget as well. And then we need to give that um, basically these same two things, the, uh, the tag and the transition. Now this, uh, this places list.index name is not actually a thing here in the date view, but it, it is called, we do have that variable. It's just called the uh, trip title now. If you, because um, if you if you notice down here, we're actually saving the trip title to that and passing just the trip title over to you know this date view. So the date view has the same value, but it's called the trip title. So go ahead and use that. And now when you save that and rerun it, um, and you click on one of these, you'll see kind of a nice animation there. You'll see it kind of like expands up to the top and animates. Uh, you'll also notice we're getting a little bit of an error and that's because our height here is now larger than our height was in, the, in our original widget. So to fix that is actually also pretty simple. We just need to add this widget into a scrolling 
child view or a single child scroll view. So go ahead and find this card here. And this is under the selected details. And just go ahead and add another widget around that. And it's called the single child scroll view. So when you add that in, it should fix that error we were getting. Uh, and you'll notice like if you click one of these, it it animates up to the top, which looks kind of nice. And then when you go back, it you know it shrinks it back down. Uh, and this also because we added that uh, transition on user gestures. If you're on iOS and you if you swipe back like this, it'll still do that animation there. Yeah, so that's going to be it for now. Again, the code, I didn't fully write out everything, but I will put a link to it in the bio of this video. Uh, but yeah, comment if you are getting stuck on anything or you want to see anything more specifically. Good stuff. Ciao for now.